Out of the five Power Ranger colors represented in this newest movie, the only solid colored t-shirt I have is black. I used to have a solid blue colored t-shirt, but that was until we had a sort of bleach accident at work one night. So it's no longer solid blue. So, I guess I'm going to have to be the Black Ranger for this movie review. I'm blue! <laughs> oh, I'm black! What? I am. No, you're not! <laughs> now, I'm sure most of you know what the Power Rangers is and that this is a reboot of the Power Rangers and this is based off of the first couple seasons of Power Rangers, I believe, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers stage before they became a bunch of different types and different incarnations of the Power Rangers and different names. I think it's still going. Is it still going? I think the Japanese version is still going too, which was before the American version. Or at least our American version was clips from the Japanese show, but added clips of American show. Yeah, never mind. I'm sure you can look all that up. It's pretty fascinating actually. So this movie is about five very troubled teenagers with bad pasts and bad backgrounds and some that have done really stupid stuff. Three of the five are in detention and that's how they meet. But eventually all five of these teens come together in this one spot when they find these miraculous coins. And now these coins are giving all five of these teenagers superpowers. To make a long story short, they also find an underground alien spaceship with a robot and a big talking head that tells them that, hey, they're going to be the new Power Rangers. They're going to be the next superheroes in order to defend a uh, MacGuffin, yeah, I'm just saying it's a MacGuffin, against an evil witch who used to be a Power Ranger named Rita Repulsa. And repulsive she is. And so, not only is this a team of superheroes, but it's an origin story of a team of superheroes. Now, when the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was on TV for the first time, I saw them as a kid, and I watched them very frequently. So frequently that when the first movie came out, I saw that in theaters. And I was excited, and I loved it, and I was a kid, so... But I've kind of put that behind me, and I haven't really seen an episode and forever. I noticed it showed up on Netflix, so I guess I could always, if I'm curious, I could always re-watch some episodes. But when this new movie was announced, I wasn't really looking forward to it. I wasn't excited. I know a lot of people that were excited, none that I knew personally, but I knew there was a lot of people that were super excited for this movie. I wasn't. I knew I had already seen probably the best movie this week, which is Life, and yeah, it is my favorite movie, and I don't think it's better than Power Rangers for me, and it's, I'm sure it's going to be better than Chips, uh, but I'll find that out tomorrow morning. But it was Tuesday, I do movie reviews, I went to go see Power Rangers, and it was pretty good. Alright, if you're worried about how corny the TV show was, and how campy it was, and how insane it was, and you don't want to really see that on the big screen, well, fear not, because they make it a more realistic, a little bit more dark tone, even if it is a little bit more generic. But if you're looking for that, that type of reboot, then Power Rangers is probably for you. There is definitely humor in it that falls flat for me, but some people might enjoy. And there definitely is some campiness, especially when it comes to Rita Repulsa. But for the most part, it is a more serious tone. It is a darker tone and an acceptable tone. So if you like the campiness, if you like the kookiness of the TV show, this is probably not for you. So I guess true fans of the show most likely won't like this version of the Power Rangers. Now let's talk about what I honestly liked. First off, I thought the acting was good. And for once, I actually wasn't annoyed by Alpha. Um, is it Alpha Alpha? No, it's Alpha. Yeah, Alpha 5 or Alpha something, right? I forgot the robot's name. But I was annoyed with him in the TV show. I thought he had an annoying voice. And yes, this character does the I-I-I, 
like about two or three times, but it's more of a, oh, ay ay ay, not like, ay 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 ay. <laughs> Sorry about that. And the robot was voiced by Bill Hader in this film, so maybe that's why it didn't feel annoying to me. I mean, there's moments where the robot's sort of eh, but at least he's not super annoying. And I have to say, Brian Cranston is the best part of this movie, which, go figure, right? I mean, of course he's the best. He's definitely the best actor in this group of people in this movie. But who would have thought that in a Power Rangers film, I would actually like Zordon's performance than anyone else? But actually, I kind of like Zordon in this movie because he has sort of a motivation which I'll get into a little bit later. But I think all the kids that played the Power Rangers were good. I do kind of like the troubled teenagers angle in this film. I like the chemistry between the five actors and I do like that it's all about, or the main focus, is about them coming together as a team, them having to learn about each other before they can become a team and before they can even morph into the Power Rangers. Because not only is this a superhero origin story, this is a superhero origin story of a superhero team, and they have to learn the ropes, they have to get to know each other, they have to become a team, become a unit, and it follows all the same plot points you'd expect of that type of movie. And so, in a way, it does come off as generic and things that you would expect and very by the book. But at the same time, it's done at an acceptable level that ultimately, I still liked it. Just know that it could be very generic and bland to people who just don't like that kind of story. Or feel that kind of story is so overused nowadays. But like I said, I feel that the backstory with the teens, the acting, the chemistry with all five of them were at an acceptable level that I actually found myself enjoying the movie. And I found myself really enjoying the first two thirds of the movie, especially when it's focused on the characters, their backstory, them getting to know each other, all of that. I enjoyed that part of the movie more than the rest of the film. Now I'm not saying that the movie went downhill once the action started, once the morphing happened and they became the Power Rangers, I still found the action fun as well. The action wasn't amazing, but because I liked the characters and liked the team aspect, it got me to get involved with the action and feel so the action was just good enough for it to be acceptable and passable and just plain good. Actually, I liked Zordon's role in this movie. I liked his reaction to when he finds out the people who find the coin because it's supposed to be the five people destined to become the Power Rangers, the noble heroes, and he finds out that they're just a bunch of teens, and he has the reaction you'd think he would have. Here he's been in a ship for thousands of years hoping for the best and the brightest and the strongest and the most noble people and the people who find the coins are a bunch of teens. Troubled teens, if I might add. And so with him training them to be the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers just so they can morph isn't really for them to fight Rita but for him to get out of that wall, get out of that realm that he's in and morph into a Power Ranger and come back to life in a way. And so he's actually kind of using the Power Rangers through most of the movie and I like that aspect of it. And when they start fighting Goldar, which we see in the trailers, he's this big giant golden, well molted, molting golden giant. And when the Power Rangers first fight him, they're with the Zords rather than the Megazord. And I like that because I don't remember it's been a long time since I saw the TV show. I don't remember them actually fighting with the Zords. I only remember them summoning the Zords and then all then automatically turning them into the Megazord. And so it was actually interesting seeing them fight with the Zords. I do have to say the Black Sword, the Mammoth Sword. I thought it was a mammoth in the TV show. And maybe it's supposed to be in this movie, but out of all the Zords, that's the one that looks off. That's the one that doesn't look right. Everything else, all the, the four other Zords 
represent the animals they're supposed to and kind of look like the animals they're supposed to be. Like a T-Rex, a saber-toothed tiger, uh, a pterodactyl, a triceratops. The mammoth, though, it's got six legs and it looks like a bug. It looks like a horned beetle, if anything. I don't know, that was really throwing me off. That looked really weird. It looked like a weird choice. And overall, the special effects in this movie are iffy. There are things that actually look good, and there are things that look cartoony. Mainly, Goldard looks like a, just really weird. I, but then again, I've seen issues with golden CGI in movies before, especially molted or molting gold. I mean, just look at Gods of Egypt where the gods bleed gold. That looked really awful. I also have mixed feelings with Elizabeth Banks' portrayal of Rita Repulsa. Um, she definitely puts the repulsive in Repulsa. She is the nastiest creature I have ever seen in a Power Rangers movie. And that's, that's, that's saying something. But her performance is kind of weird to explain because on one hand, it's really creepy, it's disturbing. I mean, she's pulling people's golden teeth out just so she can get enough gold to make Goldar. Yet at the same time, it's overacted in a way where it's almost comical, and it's really on the line between really creepy and disturbing and really so bad it's good. It's really hard to describe it, and so I have mixed feelings with that performance because everyone else plays everything else pretty straight. Oh, and one other thing about the Power Rangers, the product placement. Yeah, that's something I don't normally talk about in my movie reviews. A lot of movie reviews are talking about Krispy Kreme donuts for the Power Rangers and that it's its own character and that the product placement for that is baffling. And none of it spoiled it for me, they just said that you'll know it when you see it and boy did I know it when I saw it. Product placement is one thing, but this one was really baffling to me that I can't believe it was in the movie and such an integral piece in the movie. I've never seen a product placement, something like a restaurant or Krispy Kreme donuts or something, unless it's made up, be like a crucial point of a big blockbuster movie that had nothing to do with Krispy Kreme donuts. Now granted it is humorous because it's not like the building itself is the objective. It's not like you need Krispy Kreme donuts to save the world or something like that. No, instead the MacGuffin that Rita Repulsa is after is underneath the building, underneath Krispy Kreme donuts, and she has to destroy it to get to the MacGuffin. But ultimately this allows lines for actors to say such as protect the Krispy Kreme donuts and let's surround the let's Let's form a barrier around the Krispy Kreme donuts. We can't let Rita get to Krispy Kreme. I mean, like, things like that, and it's really hilarious. And there is one moment where Rita Repulsa is inside. She grabs a donut, and it looks like it's the beginning of a commercial because she just looks at it. She doesn't look at the camera and take a bite into it, but she does take a bite into it just before Goldar smashes his fist through the roof to plow down into the ground, to plow through the building to get to the MacGuffin to dig it out of the ground. Anyway, that's all I have to say. That was, I actually found that kind of funny. And so there you go. I think Power Rangers is a pretty average, good, fun film. Now I won't deny that it definitely is generic and it's definitely by the numbers, but it's done to an extent where it's acceptable enough, it's fine enough, where I came out of the theater actually liking it. And also bear in mind, I went into the film not thinking much of it, and when I actually liked it, that's a pretty good surprise. So ultimately, I'm giving Power Rangers three stars. So did you see Power Rangers? What'd you think about it? Go ahead and comment below. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and check out my movie reviews of 2015, 2016, or 2017. As always, this is Bruce Gifford and this was Just My Opinion.